It's Amara and Jess from Sci for Us. We normally have our Saturday STEM sessions every Saturday, but because we cannot host them, we are bringing the science experiments to yeah. you at home. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always talking about how science is in everyday life and how science is all around us. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'll just show you mm -hmm. how you could do science. The first thing we're going to do at Saturday Club, what do we always start off with? 60, 60 second, second experiment. So this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blindfold Jessica and we're going to do a taste test. So what I've done is I've got different products from around the kitchen that we have here and I've put it on a plate and I'm going to blindfold Jessica and she has to guess which food it is. So we're looking to test her senses, her taste buds and... Uh, Now salt is used in our everyday life, mm -hmm. we use it in so many foods, yeah. that's why it's called common salt. And it's found abundantly, so a salt is made when an acid and an alkaline come together in equal portions, and this forms a salt. And because they come together in equal portions, they have a pH of 7, so they're neutral. But we find salt naturally in the sea, mm -hmm. so we have sea salt and that's where it's found naturally. These are salt can include salt being brittle, hard and crystalline. Mm -hmm. So it has a negative ion and a positive ion. Yeah. Now we're going to do a few science experiments with salt. Um, today, most of the ingredients that we use, you should be able to find at home. And we've been to the shops ourselves, <laughs> so we pick products that are still abundant. Like a crystalline, mm -hmm. it's solid. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is create like salt crystal pictures. So all you need is sheets of paper, TVA glue, which can be purchased at Powerland, um, supermarkets, home bargains, um, and then salt. And you'll also need just like a baking tray that you could use at home so that you could dust the salt off because we don't want your parents having to clean up to the <laughs> Find the pictures if you have any food colouring uh, by doing is getting the glue and you can make any picture that you want so you can decide to like spell out your name, you could do a pattern, but basically you use the glue and you're gonna draw a design on your paper. So I'm gonna do that next door. Can you call that the name? And what's it say? Sprinkle the salt all over it while it's still wet. Make sure all your glue is covered by the salt. And already you can start to see the salt attach, and it really looks like crystals, doesn't it? It does. If you lift up your picture and you dust all the excess salt off. So, this is good if you want to do the picture again or make another one. Um, and then what you'll see is that you can start to see, it looks yeah. like little crystals. Yeah. Oh, that looks really good it's with your really name. nice. Yeah. But um, to be able to see the pattern more, yeah. we're going to add some colour to it. So um, this is just normal food colouring. And what you do is just add a few drops, just literally tiny of food colouring. And then add some um, water to it, only a little bit of water. You don't want it to be too runny. So like half a teaspoon, not even. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Um, and you can decide to use as many colours. We have red and blue here. Um, but you can use as many colours. And then if you have a pipette, 
can use the pipette to squeeze up the liquid and start to put it over your design. If you don't have a pipette, you can always use a small teaspoon um, from your house. And what you do is you just have to do this bit really delicately with precision so that you're getting it over your design. You don't want it on bits of the paper that doesn't have your design. Yeah, it's like a scissor. Yeah. And if you do this, please email us with your pictures. Yeah. We'll love to see your different designs. Yeah. Sticking with salt, and we're learning about the different properties salt has. So the next experiment we're going to do, you just need cup, um, or you can use glasses. If you want to open. Some vegetable oil, not too much. Water, and then your food colorings, and of course. So first of all, just put some water, I'd say three quarters of the way. Okay, three quarters of the way. Question to you guys, does oil and water mix? Mm. You guys should know the answer to this by now. Then we want one quarter of oil. So if you didn't know the answer, by the time you pour it in, you should know the answer. Because we just want you to see... Then, a layer of oil at the top. Okay, next we get our food colouring. So which colour would you like, Marla? Green or red? Or blue. Red, please. Okay, thank you. And again, if you have a pipette, if not, you can just use a small spoon. So here's your pipette. But what you need to do is you need to do this with, what was the word I used before? Precision. So we just want you to put small drops on the top of your cup. So you should see the drops sit on top of your oil. Yeah, and you don't need to add water to the food cup. going to add the salt. You can go first. Okay. And let's see what happens. Oh wow. So what can you see is happening? <laughs> can you see? So we had the drops of the food coming at the top. And now we can see that this has actually gone down to the bottom, hasn't it? But it doesn't just stay at the bottom. What does it do? It just rises back up again. And why does this happen? Well, this is because salt is actually much heavier than water. So did you see, as soon as we added the salt into this, the cup, it took some of the oil with it on its way down and it dropped to the bottom. But then when the salt does actually eventually dissolve in the water, it then rises back up, so the oil will rise back up to the top. You can see the experiment, we added food colouring to visualise it. So you should start to see in your cup, you will see the food colouring actually go down into your cup. And it's because the salt is bringing it down with it as it sinks. Three. Three. <laughs> Three. We're going to use salt to make play -Doh. Okay. So first of all, we need, the ingredients for this experiment is flour, mm -hmm. salt, and water. And if you want to, you can colour your plate, yeah. but you don't have to. So, what we'll do is one cup, thank you. Go on, put it in. Go on. Then we need half a cup of salt. Yeah, right, half a cup. Then we need the yeah. same amount of salt and water, so yeah. half a cup of salt, water. Mm. And then you add it in slowly. I need a spoon. Slowly, then mix. And you should just see dough start to form. If it is too liquidy, add 
more flour and if it's too doughy, what should we add? More water. Okay. So then when you think it's correct, you can then use your hands. And some milk. And again, you can just get this from anywhere, home bargains, hobby craft, you know. So we want, as real scientists, we want to put it to the test. So here's my homemade Play-Doh. I didn't decide to add a colour, but you could add a colour. And this is shop-bought Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to do some challenges. Can you make your Play-Doh into a nice ball? Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Can you? Yep. Homemade Play-Doh works. Okay. One, one. <laughs> Now, can you make your homemade Play-Doh into a square? Okay, so... Yeah, it looks about square. a square. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So, TT. Now, can you make... <laughs> can your Play-Doh cut in the Okay, let's see. Once you put the salt onto the string, you have to wait for a couple of minutes. So put this one aside and then you will see your string stick to the ice. But you have to just put it aside and let the melting take place. Magic. Why do I sound like that? Hey friends! This <laughs> is of salt. We were able to do four different experiments. Remember to take any videos or pictures of any of the experiments you tried out and send it in to us. We look forward to